I want you to open your Bibles to the great book of Revelation. Let's begin with chapter 4. We're going to take the fifth verse of chapter 4. And I want you just to flow with me a little bit. Let this be real um, uh, smooth and let it flow. Okay, chapter four, verse five, and it reads, and out of the throne proceedeth lightnings and thunderings and voices. You're going to see thunderings and voices connected quite a bit because when God speaks, it is thunder. Okay, many people hear it as thunder unless they happen to be God's elect. Then they hear the voice. And there were seven lamps. That's important. Don't forget it. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Before what? Before the throne of God, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, you know what God's spirit is, don't you? It's the Holy Spirit. And he has seven spirits, and he also has 7,000 election. And you might as well start connecting the two. Because God has a plan, and he has a purpose for the election. Now, go with me to uh, chapter 5, and we'll take verse 6 this time. And I beheld, I looked, and this is what I saw. And lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the, of the four beasts, that's the four living creatures, the zoi, zoon. And in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. And of course, that's Messiah, naturally. Having seven horns, and... Horns stipulate power, okay? And seven, of course, means spiritual completeness. And seven eyes, this is very important to you. He has what? Has seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the world. And so it is, those seven spirits do go into the whole world. Why? To God's elect. And God's elect as ultimately will speak. And there is a reason you're not to premeditate. You'll find it in the 10th chapter of this great book of Revelation. Let's turn there if we may. And I'm speaking here to God's election. Verse 10, chapter 10, verse one. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon the, his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And we got the angel of our father there. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. In other words, he was all controlling. It was worldwide. It covered everywhere. And cried with a loud voice, not, a, not softly, a loud voice and as when a lion roareth and when he had cried seven thunders uttered their voice now I want you to remember in st. John chapter 12 when God spoke to Jesus um, then Jesus told the people some said it thundered and Jesus said no that was the voice of God and it wasn't spoken for my benefit but yours so that you would know the voice of God. When the children of Israel in the desert heard God's voice from the mountain, they were so afraid, they said, please don't take us to that place anymore. It frightens a lot of people, but it doesn't, the voice of God does not frighten God's elect. It's music to their ears. It's the Holy Spirit playing the tune on the vocal cords of a human being that God's word can go forth into the world. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, I'm going to write this down. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up these, those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Do you know why that is? Those seven thunders, what, what are the elect supposed to do when they're delivered up before the false messiah? You're not to premeditate what you're going to say because it's not you talking. Go 
that's the being the reason that it is sealed because it's not people that speak as it is written in Mark 13 don't you dare premeditate what you'll say before him because it's not you talking it's the voice of God through the Holy Spirit and as it is written in Luke 21 even the gainsayers will be convinced by what you say at that time again why it's not you talking and uh, we continue and the angel which which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever almighty God who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that are therein are and the sea and the things that are therein that there should be time no longer we're there that's the end okay but it always takes a set of events to consummate the end of the age things have to be done you are all familiar enough with the scripture to know what many of those things must that they must transpire so the end isn't yet until the work is done because we want to save every soul possibly that we can that we can drag out of the fire and have them stand on the right side of paradise rather than go to hell so even though in the millennium there will be teaching naturally listen very carefully sharpen up for me verse 7 and in the days of the voice of the seventh angel Do you know who the seventh angel is that's the last trump that means it is the end the but did you know what it said it said in the days of the voice not the trump the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God shall be finished I'll say that again the mystery of God shall be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets in other words he told us all about it in the Old Testament every move everything that was necessary there's one thing that is very wrong with that verse I want you to remember I want you to memorize a Greek word and it changes the whole tense of this chapter it's very important to you where it states the word begin that's not what the manuscripts say the word in the Greek is mellow M E L L O pronounced in the Greek tongue mellow it doesn't mean begin and there's no way you can translate it begin it means about to be it means intention of but not started yet now what difference does that make to you when the seventh trump sounds Christ returns instantly and that'll throw you off it has it has thrown many of us off for a long time not catching that one fact that it's mistranslated from the Greek manuscripts because when he's about to sound or has the intention of sounding you're still in the sixth trump and that means Satan is here that means we've still got a ways to go that means that those voices of the sons and daughters speaking must transpire yet and the seven voices see to it that they do again the word began is mellow in me alelo in the Greek and it means about to not doing not beginning but about to placing you in the tense of the sixth trump with the Antichrist still here and you had better be on guard you'd better know what you're doing verse 8 and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth do you do you ever take hold of that little book you ever study it called the Word of God 
and especially those that know the little book and can see the mystery of God and realize he has an election that they have work to do that they have witness to perform and certainly that's sweet in your mouth but it's kind of bitter in your tummy because of the times and the things that are transpiring at that same time during the sixth trump. Uh, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. Uh, and he said unto me, Take it, take it, and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. You know, this little book is spoken of in the great book of Ezekiel as well. when. The very altar of God with the seven lamps appeared on this earth. In the book of Ezekiel, again, take the book, eat it, which is a Hebraism that means absorb it, meditate on it, learn from it. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and I ate it up and it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. And the truth is so beautiful and it tastes so good. But then when we see what the Kenites are doing to our people and the other peoples of the world in deception and Satan pulling the switches every time he gets a chance, uh, that makes you kind of bitter, doesn't it? it? If you're not careful, it makes you premeditate what you want to say to him. Don't do it. Let God do the talking. And he said unto me in verse 11, and he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many people and nations, tongues, and kings. And that's exactly what God's elect shall do. They will prophesy. And what? It's sealed. You don't know what, it's going, what God's going to say through you. He has instructed you. Don't you even premeditate. Don't think beforehand. I'll do the talking. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> Open your Bibles to Amos chapter 3. I want you to keep this all together now. What did God say in the close of that verse? Don't you know I've foretold all my prophets? I told them all about this. So when you want to know more about it, what must you do? Now think, if he told all the, the prophets all about it, he said, I gave them the whole mystery. Naturally, you go to the prophets and find out. You go to the prophets and learn what it is that he would have you know concerning the mystery of God, whereby you are a fit servant of the living God. Amos chapter 3, I want to pick it up uh, in about verse 7. And it reads, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The prophets are going to keep us informed. And you know, I, I have many questions that come in. Are there prophets today? And I always, you know what my answer is. I said, you bet. Isaiah, Daniel, Amos, we got him. We got, and, and God told us everything we need to know through them. Okay. Well, what is this message then? The lion hath roared. Who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken. Who can but prophesy when God speaks and you're not to premeditate? It will be heard, and as it is written again, I'll repeat myself, Luke 21, even the gainsayers will be convinced. Why? Because it is God speaking. Publish in the palaces of Ashdod and in the palaces of the land of Egypt, and say, assemble yourselves unto the mountains of Samaria, that's of the ten tribes, and behold, the great tumults in the midst thereof and the oppressed in the midst thereof. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. This word palaces is a cathedral or churches. And they do store up uh, violence in churches if you're teaching people to follow the false messiah. That won't cut it. That's not God's word. 
to follow the false one. But we are to follow the true and nothing but the truth, so help us God. So keep your church clear of hypocrisy, false teaching, and would-be prophets, which God hasn't sent. Verse 11, therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down the strength from thee, and thy palaces or your churches shall be spoiled. You don't have to read God's word. You're going to fly away. That's what Satan likes to say. And boy, does it mislead and destroy churches because God has a purpose for his church. And it's so that he can speak through it, so that he can save souls, not destroy them. Now, you all know who that adversary is. That's one of Satan's names. As a matter of fact, his name, Apollyon, his name, Ababdon, his name, Apollyon, means destroyer and adversary, mainly adversary. He is that adversary. He does more work and loves to work better in pulpits than anywhere else. I'm not judging anyone, beloved. I'm telling you the truth. And though it's bitter to the tummy, it hurts. It's not something to be proud of. But to see our people deceit is a terrible thing. Verse 12, thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd, and this is the true shepherd, as the true shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria and in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. What that says is all they're going to have is half of a chair and half of a bed left. He's going to strip them. He's going to take everything from them. They're hardly going to own anything that's totally paid for themselves. Does that sound familiar? Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts. You keep it straight. When the word Jacob is used, that's the natural seed, all right? Both houses. That in, 14, that in the day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, I will also visit the altars of Bethel. That's the house of God. I'm going to those churches. I'm going to visit there. You think you'll be welcome? And the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. I'm going to get rid of false teaching at, at an altar that claims to be mine. Again, horns symbolize power. I'm going to strip them. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. Those that build up great citadels and great buildings and call them houses of God and yet the word of God is never taught there, I'm going to fix them. There won't be anything left of them. He doesn't like it. Now, what about the seven eyes and being the seven spirits of God? Uh, t turn with me, if you would, on back in the Minor Prophets here to Zechariah, the great book of Zechariah. <clears throat> Let's understand the seven spirits of God that are still sealed. Why? Because you're not to premeditate. Chapter 3, the great book of Zechariah. And... Um, Zechariah meaning remembered of Yah. And God does remember his own. And it, this tells you how he directs them. I could teach the whole book of Revelation from the 14th chapter of this great book. Basically. Chapter 3 verse 1. And he showed me Joshua. Joshua is the Hebrew word for Jesus. Okay. The high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. That's the conflict. That's the trouble. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. 
O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Every time I read that, I remember the translation I was able to do on the Bat Creek Stone in Loudoun County, Tennessee, of those famous words that those nine priests, Hebrew priests, wrote on that stone that let the voice of God be the poker that draws these firebrands back to God. Uh, the Word of God is just so beautiful. All down through the years, the remnant has brought that truth forth to us today. Why? Well, God promised that his prophet, his, through his prophets, that word would come forth. Skip down to, if you would, to the eighth verse. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are the men wondered at. No gender there, it's both men and women. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. That branch is the shoot. That's Messiah. That's Jesus Christ. Verse 9, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone. Incidentally, is your name on that stone, a little white stone in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17? Did you receive yours, the manna from heaven, meaning the truth? That little stone shall be, uh, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. There you go again. Well, who were those seven eyes? The Spirit of God. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. It's going to happen. It won't be pretty for some. It'll be beautiful for us. Because it will be the voice of God through those seven, with those eyes doing what they're supposed to do. And that stone, even which are a part of the stone that the builders rejected. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine, under the fig tree. Everybody will care. Continuing right into chapter 4. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked with me, waked me rather, as a man that is waked out of his sleep bothered me. And he said unto me, what seest thou? What, what you looking at? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps. What are those seven lamps? Think about it. I took you to four or five in Revelation. Those seven lamps thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof. Very important. What flows through those stems? Not oil, necessarily, but the Spirit of God. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and I spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. And then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. What spirit? My spirit. That's the Holy Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, that voice that flows through those pipes, that lights those lights. That means to let them be light bearers, to bring forth truth is the Spirit of God that flows through those seven to the seven, the voice of God. The thunder is sealed because we're not even to premeditate what we'll say. It'll be God doing the talking. Aren't you glad of that? I doubt too many of us would know what to say. We'd probably mess it up by maybe throwing in a word that wouldn't be too good occasionally. You know. But God knows what to say. And he has the lamp to feed it through okay, into those seven stems that were before the altar long, long ago, chosen by the Spirit of God. Do you know what Zerubbabel means in the Hebrew tongue? It means born in Babel, born in confusion, but came out 
came out of confusion by absorbing the little book called the Word of God. Verse 7, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. Don't you dare get in his way. You will become flat. You will become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. And there you would have Psalms 118.22, the psalm always sung at Passover. The headstone that the builders rejected. We're going to put him back where he's supposed to be because he's claiming it. And you may have a part in seeing to that. One of the eyes looking, observing, and allowing God to use you as a servant to bring forth that voice of God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 9, The hands of Zerubbabel, this is those born in Babel, hath laid the foundation of this house, this church. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Those born in Babel will have that truth and come out of confusion into the true light of the menorah of Almighty God that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, lighting the way, every footstep in the darkness of the world, pre-lighting and those that pre-existed with Almighty God. What a time to live. How exciting, how vivacious the Word of God at this very time. For who hath despised the day of small things? You like to think little? Don't think little. Think big. We're taking over. It's time, and it's coming. It approaches every day. By taking over, I mean our Father is reclaiming. The day of judgment is coming. That seventh trump is about to sound. It's going to, but we got some work to do first. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord. Don't let that, don't read over that. Those seven are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro from through the whole earth, checking it, watching it, talking for him, speaking for him. When he's ready to speak, that is to say, the voice, the almighty voice of the living God. How precious it is to understand the seven thunders and to know the reason they're sealed. And again, did he not say, hey, don't worry about this. At the time that that seventh trumpeter is about to sound, then all you got to do is go back to the prophets and understand what's going to happen. And that chief headstone, the branch, is going to take his rightful place which is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He deserves it. Do you know why? Because he paid the price for all of us. Paid for our sins. Became our Passover. And how wonderful he is that he leads, that he guides, that he directs, and that he lets us understand the little book. Do you know what this plummet is? Do you know what a plumb bob is? Okay. When you're building something, that stone with the seven eyes is on a string. And God's law of gravity always makes that straight up and down. You understand? When he's building, he uses that plummet. That's the 7,000 to keep everything straight, to keep everything as it's supposed to be. The very 7,000 eyes of God that ha are willing to allow the thunder to speak through them. That that word can be heard and lives can be saved. But that plummet, that plumb bob, is that stone that separates fakes from the true thing. Verse 11, then answered I and I said unto him, 
what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? That's a good point you want to remember, beloved. That's the two witnesses is what he's talking about. And God utilizes them to bring forth the supernatural part that is necessary as it is written in Revelation chapter 11. All you have to be concerned about is letting the thunder speak and following God's word. Verse 13, and he answered me and said, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, no, my Lord. In other words, I've asked twice. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones. They stand by the Lord of the whole earth. That means in the Hebrew, it says, they are the sons of oil, okay? And there's no gender involved there. And there, again, we're not going to because you can remember it by heart. Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21, where when you are delivered up, you are not to premeditate what you will speak, but it will be the Holy Spirit that will pour that oil through you at that moment and you will speak what it is the Father gives you or what the Father speaks through you. Not to premeditate for what purpose that the testimony of Jesus Christ may cover the whole world and it shall. So that's the seven thunders. We take another step into the clarity and the simplicity which is written in God's word. And you know what? I think that's all the message I want to give this morning. I was taught by a mentor, when you've said it, you got the what, when, where, and where. Sit down, shut up. <laughs> You'd be better off. Well, that's the message. And that's the clarity of the seven thunders. There is another secondary meaning if you wait until you hear the thunder to know where the lightning's going to strike, it's too late, friend. Because the lightning's already struck and the thunder follows it. But the primary reason is God wants to use you. He wants you to be his eyes so that he can say, I have seven spirits I want to send through my seven elect, 7,000. They are my eyes in the world. And then maybe you can better understand why Christ will sit at the right hand of God until all his enemies are made his footstool. And so it is. And so it should be. Our Heavenly Father loves us very much that he pays this path of simplicity, of clarity, whereby we can hear that word and know it. Whereby, as he promised, isn't it good of him? I've let the whole mystery be known through my prophets so that you could understand in the clarity. Do you know what true wisdom is? True wisdom is to take that that might be difficult for some and simplify it where God's elect can understand it and carry it and utilize it and be a servant to the living God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the privilege of serving you, Father. Thank you for being with us this day. Father, bless each and every one here and let them be a blessing to all they come in contact with, Father. We ask you this in the precious name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ.